ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at the student portal and the services that are in our student portal first. You can access the student portal from the website mku.ac.ke. Then you click on the student services. If you go to mku.ac.ke, you click on students. Then we have a number of services lined up for, for the student. Then you click on the student portal. Alternatively, you can go to the, the browser and type student portal. .mku .ac.ke, then enter. So in our student portal, we have quite a number of services. And the first thing is you can download uh, your application letter for those who are joining us and get other documents from by just entering the application details, which you did when you are applying for the course. Two, you, you, for you to access now the other services like your information, do information update, fees, timetables, course registration, results, uh, other student requests you want to, you have paid through uh, the MPESA and you want to do some validation, access to student email, all, all that is done through the portal. You can also do clearance by the time you're finishing your, your, your uh, you finish your coursework and you want to leave the university, there's all, all that is done online. So first is to log in, how to log in. First, you need to type your student ID. This is the admission number that you are, you are you're given once you registered as your registration number. So I'm going to use a sample here. And the password by default is your national ID number, your passport number or mobile number without spaces. That is if you're logging in for the first time. Then once you log in, you access notices. So you'll find the number of notices that has and the date that was sent, and you can click on the notice to read the notice. There you can also you can click and to access those messages or those announcements that are done from the, the university. Then the other thing that you can do, you can change your password. It's always good to secure your account by changing the password. So you click on change password and you will get the current password here. And then the new password, you will type it there. You can type password hint and change password. So, uh, okay, I did not, uh, I think password should be at least six characters. So make sure you, you enter the, the correct data. You type and, and change your password in case you want to change the password. Two, so you can go to information update. And yeah, under information update, we have personal information. You can click on personal information here. And you get your information there. In case there is something that you need to, to update, the address, you have, uh, you want to update your mobile number. Most of the students, when they port, they normally use their parents' admission numbers, uh, sorry, telephone numbers. And if you want to update, you can update from there, alternative numbers. Then you select the, the set the student option. For example, if you're doing Bachelor of Commerce, then you can select the, the syllabus option here and select the specialization. If you are doing finance, banking, marketing, accounting, you select that, then you choose specialization and update. Then when times to come, come for graduation, you'll be able to apply for the graduation from the same place here by indicating the graduation that you want to apply for. And, and the and a preferred center where you can pick your gown from. You don't have to come to the main campus. Two, there is a, you can access your fee. I'll come to the others later. You can access your fee statement by just clicking on fee and you'll see how you have been paying. All your transactions are there. Three, you can access your timetables from here. The timetables are important because you require these 
timetables for unit registration. Of course, you'd get the, the, the unit code and the title, the venues, and you'd also be able to get the, the name of the, the lecturer who is teaching that unit. Now from there, you, you go to course registration, and based on the units that are on your timetable, allow me to open another window here so that we can we can be able to register. So for example, uh, if I'm if I want if I'm, I'm doing financial accounting one, I'll click on I'll, I'll select that. Uh, uh, this is the code for for financial accounting one. And since I've opened, I'll come and put that there. If you're doing it for the first time, then it's a first attempt. If you're doing it for the second time, then you select retake. But since you're doing it for the first time, you click apply, register. So you pick the other course. And let me just go back to timetables again. So let me go to timetables here. I want to register for quantitative techniques. I can copy that and add it there. I can look for another unit, maybe principles of banking and finance. Note that uh, the number of units are, are limited with the with the uh, depending on the course. If, for example, your, your course you're doing allows you to do five units, you, you do five. For example, let's say I want to do reduction to public relations, like that. Those are, those are one, two, three, four. I can choose two more, based, uh, depending on the, on what the timetable says, and the group and the units that, that you have been assigned. If, for example, your first year, the one the department has assigned you, you can pick them like that. So then click register. All of them are first attempt, then click register. In case there is a unit that you had done and you had failed, the system will not allow you to do to register it again as first attempt. So you have to change to maybe retake. Note that. I added five units and the system has told me maximum number of courses registered drop some. So I can only register these, these five. If I want to add another one, I can come here and drop. For example, I can may decide to drop uh, advanced taxation so that I can add another one. If, for example, I want to add uh, this unit. Uh, e-commerce, for example. So I'll go back to this window. And now because I have four, I can add another one. So that I'm to make them five. Now, note that uh, it's good to, to note that this unit code and title must be the ones that are here in the online portal. So that in case, uh, in case the the the, the speed the, the unit code is not correct, for example, if I was to put like that, then the system would reject because that code does not exist. So the system will tell you the maximum on the code does not exist. Now this uh, the, the, note that the status of this unit is provisional. It is important that you look at the the guide notes here. We are told that pay the required amount for the unit that you want to register. Because for us to confirm this unit, this quorum should, uh, we, should we should have paid the amount of money that is required. So the way we do it is that uh, you pay the, make sure that you've paid the amount that is required, you identify the cost units, enter the correct cost code. If you want to add and drop, you can add and drop as long as they are provisional. And then finally you confirm. For example, I can add or drop as long as they are provisional. But then once you click register, confirm, for example, I've confirmed the first three, then it means uh, only three units will appear in my transcripts or, or will appear in my in my class registers because the others are not confirmed. So what I need to do 
is to so you select the units that you want to confirm. For example, you select all of them, then you, you enroll. Then there is a, another button here for online uh, e-learning enrollment. So once you have registered, you can select them and you click e-learning enrollment so that they are added in our e-learning portal. So that because some of these courses are offered uh, both online and using face-to-face. -face. So you'll click on select the unit that you want to add and put them to the portal. Now, once you have registered, note that you cannot drop them because you have confirmed already. So because if because the, the status is showing us they are valid, it has changed from provisional. So you can only you ca you cannot drop at this point. If you want to drop at this point, then you need to, con to, co to contact the admission office so that they can they can drop for you those units. The other thing is that once you have attended classes, then those units may not cannot be dropped because they already have other records attached to them like attendance and other and uh, attendance maybe coursework and then uh, some cut marks. Then after after registration, then you will be able to do once the so at the course registration before I finish, there is also a, a special exams when you when 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 you want to register for examinations. There is a you can register for the normal examinations, but or normal uh, uh, end of semester examination, but you can also register for special exams just in case they are you have maybe you have one or two issues, maybe you missed one exam or two, or maybe you failed or and you want to do a, a supplementary. The other thing is when you want to access the results, you'll click on results here and be able to see that your results here. Then the other services that you find here are services like when you want to, to, to collect your certificates, your completion letters and transcript, you can apply from them online and then you indicate where you want to pick it from or you want to correct yourself and then you send the request. Then you can print the student pass from here. For those, uh, especially the student pass from there, uh, especially when, when uh, if required. The other thing that is that you have, we have what you call approval forms. Let's say you want to apply for academic leave, you go to approval forms under my request, then you click new. Let's say you want to start September 2022. You want to go for an academic leave because of financial constraints or maybe legal, legal issues, maternity or medical grounds, then you get there. Because of that, maybe lack of fees. then you save the request, you send the request. Then once it is approved, you're able to see the status of that academic leave. It has been sent. The head of department will act on it, the library, the other sections, until it is approved by academic registrar. Then you'll be able to print your letter online. Or then the other thing that you can approve, you can, where you can request online is resumption. Once you come back from academic leave, you need to fill a, a resumption form. And you say you want maybe this to resume in January and you get there and then you save. The same, the same will be sent to the department and you'll be able to, get, be able to see whether your academic resumption has been approved by the head of department, the exams, finance, they'll check whether you have done the payment, registrar, admission, uh, uh, registrations department, and academic registration also. The other thing that you can do from here is you can do campus transfer. But this one, once you do the campus transfer, it goes to the department. Maybe you want to, the semester is September, December. It get the campus you are moving to, maybe Nairobi. But that, that program must be in that campus. You indicate the reason why you, the, the remarks here. And OK, then you'll be able to see the, the head of the comments from the head of department. If they approve and when it was approved, then it goes to the dean. Then all oh, you have to uh, clear with all the other sections before you can report to the other campus. That is how that those services are done. And more services will, are, are also done online. 
and you'll be able to see them as you as we add them. The other thing that you can book hostels online. You can indicate, for example, the 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 the, the reference that you are, that, and then maybe you're booking for the first month. You book a room, and then you booking details. You indicate the hostel, for example, Batian or whatever. Then you check room availability, and the system will be able to check and tell you whether there are free rooms. So you'll be able to see which rooms are free and where they are. Then you can you can indicate the one that you want to book. And then you indicate your details there and then confirm. Then the the hostel department will, once you make the payment, will be able to reserve the room for you. But in, after 24 hours and you have not paid, then you need to, to book again. Then from there, from here, you can access the student email. Student email is very important because uh, you use it to access the online sessions, online sessions for Microsoft that, that are conducted through Microsoft Teams, and other sessions that are done online, especially when it comes to orientation and other services. You're able to access internet through, through the university using that email. So you can click on the student email, and the system will provide you with a link where you can create very fast an email. So you just need to come here, indicate your and sign in. So once you sign in, sorry, sign in, you it will it will it will, it will, it will send you a verification code which you use to to move to the next next level and you can also download the download the tutorial on how to do create student email from the same portal So you'd get the code that has been sent to your email. So you said, in case the the email is missing, you can always go to this information update where we started at the beginning and update your the code. Then you sign in, of course. So then uh, from here, you can you can create an email, you can update your Safaricom number so that you're able to buy subsidized bundles from Safaricom by just clicking there and update your number. Back to, you can create your official uh, student email. So you, so the system will select for you, you will put the password here. You confirm the password. You can indicate alternative email. Then submit. So you'll see that uh, you, you have been registered here and the email is that at mylife.mku.ac.ke and the password that you set. Then you can log out and you can be able to access now your email from here but you can also access uh, so the sub, you can access you can download the tutorial or the manual in case you have any difficulties on how to to create your email that tutorial is available online
finally, I want because uh, we can go back. Uh, you can access our e-learning portal from here. By just clicking the on the student portal, it will take you to the e-learning. And then you log in. For example, if you are a, a, a distance learning student, if you are a day evening kid, you click on that portal. And other services that, for example, the examination portal, when it comes to the time to do all exams, especially for those who do online exams. We have a help desk, library e-resources, you can get them from here. We have a tutorial here on e-learning, and you can access our help desk by clicking on that. Then you'll come and you can see we have a knowledge base here, where you how to apply, how to online exams. There are some links on uh, in Microsoft Teams, tutorials you can download, but you can also submit a ticket and indicate the kind of assistance that you want. For example, if it's on e-learning, you click there, you, you indicate your let's say your your name, let's say your your John, your email is. And you can confirm that email there. Yeah. Indicate the registration number. Subject. Logging. Then you indicate the message. So you might make sure you 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 submit. You give your admission number as it is then uh, in case you you want to attach a screenshot you can attach from here by clicking and locating the screenshot here and then you submit ticket so our team will look at that ticket and be able to respond to you the ticket has been sent and you can always view the ticket and the response that the the our team will, will give once they work on it. Within 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 the, a day or less than a day, that ticket should have been responded to. Finally, for those who are paying through M-Pesa, you can do some validation here. Once you do it, you pay through M-Pesa. You go to the portal. You don't have to log in. Just click on validation because the M-Pesa is through GT Bank. So you click school fees. You come and choose the, the, the university here, the institution. Then you say you be a current new applicant or a, so you are current student because you're, you're already in our system. So you, you validate first, it checks whether that student is, up, up, is there. Then you, indicate, uh, you can indicate the cost, you are paid through M-Pesa. You click next. Then from there, you you, you indicate to the Mpesa. You have an Mpesa. You have made a payment. Yes. Then you indicate the reference number, the Mpesa reference number, and uh, the what you are paying for, and your phone number and email, and a copy of that. Uh, once you validate the the message, then. That, that 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 information will be to a system and you will receive an email and an, an SMS that that has been done. So as you can see, the, the student portal has a number of things, quite a number is quite comprehensive, and it will be accessing more features as you move on. So uh, when you, when it comes to uh, co uh, doing the doing the exams, you'll be required to do evaluations from the portal here. And from there, you can do, for those who are back to registration, for those who are doing uh, online exams, you need to register the exams from here. Of course, when the timetables are sent up, are put, it will be available. You can choose uh, You can choose the, to, to generate an exam card from here. So to choose a semester, and then uh, you generate. Of course, the system will check whether you have done your coursework, you have done evaluation, then you can print the card from here. So, and you can see, and then you take it to finance for stamping and so on. So this one, no unit is appearing because uh, is, is the beginning of the semester. The, mark, the results have not been keyed in. So once the coursework has been entered, you'll be able to print your exam card from the portal. 
you can do cost evaluation for the lecturers once the dates have been set and you'll be able to, to do all that information by clicking on the unit and do the, the do the evaluation before the exam that comes in the between eighth and the ninth week so as you can see most of the services here are automated and and the, and the university is using this portal to, uh, uh, to for, for students to access these services and finally to uh, and also to communicate with students so it's always good to keep on checking on the bonia portal there are some uh, the messages that are sent the, the announcements that are done and download and maybe some information that you may need to download just in case the 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 there the, the, the are some the, just in case the university requires to do so. Thank you very much. I want to stop there. In the next session, we'll look at the e-learning and how to use it how, and how we'll be interacting with it and also Microsoft Teams. Thank you very much and have a nice day at the university. Thank you. Best Mount Kenya University, unlocking infinite possibilities.